A very good afternoon. This is Lunchtime News on TV1. For the News First Team, I am Rochelle Tumodra. Before we head into your stories in detail, these are your headlines this afternoon. Motor accident in Tambuttegama claims the lives of five from the same family. Farmers from Ambilipitia continue their satyagraha to save 65,000 acres of paddy fields. Insulin shortage at state hospitals. Measures taken to make emergency purchases. X-ray and CT scan activities at state hospitals at risk of being halted. What measures were taken over the report compiled by the National Delimitation Committee? Donald Trump pleads not guilty to 2020 election charges. Now on to your top story this afternoon. A fatal motor accident has occurred in area Gamathabutegama early this morning claimed the lives of five people. According to the police, three children who suffered injuries from the crash have been admitted to the hospital. The accident had occurred when a vehicle carrying a group from Kahatakasdikilia collided with a lorry parked on the side of the road. Police said eight members of the same family were travelling in the vehicle during the time of the crash, adding that they were on their way back after obtaining passports. All eight passengers who suffered severe injuries as a result of the accident had been admitted to the Tamputtegama hospital where two men and two women succumbed to their injuries. Another man and a three-year-old child involved in the accident were transferred to the Anuradhapura Teaching Hospital for further treatment later this morning. Another 40-year-old man who was in the ICU had passed away. Investigations have revealed that the cause of the crash was the driver of the vehicle losing control due to extreme speed. The remains of the deceased are currently placed at the Tamuttegama Hospital. Farmers of Wallava continued their struggle demanding water to save 65,000 hectares of paddy fields. More than 30,000 families are facing the unsavory consequences of the failure of the competent authorities to make timely decisions. The Satyagraha launched by farmers in Ambilipitia, urging authorities to release water from the Samanala Vava to the Udavala Reservoir, is ongoing for the 12th day today. A large portion of fields have already been destroyed due to the lack of water. Farming communities are now engaged in a struggle to save what is left for their fields. But the priority of the authorities, including ministers in charge, seem to be power generation and not food security. The same politicians we voted for are the ones who are burdening farmers. Farmers are the ones who nourish the nation with food and work towards its development. This is how they are treating us after receiving our vote. At one point, they sympathized with farmers and bought organic fertilizer. In the end, we lost six million US dollars and were left to beg. Now they want to ensure we have an uninterrupted supply of electricity without thinking about our hunger. Earlier this week, farming communities who obtained water for their fields from the Veli Oya took steps to release water to the Udavalava Reservoir. This water had been collected to be used by them during the intermediate cultivating season. However, Deputy Director of the Sri Lanka Mahavali Authority, Nilanta Danapala, said the water released from the Veli Oya is insufficient to save paddy lands from destruction. The President's Secretary had chaired a special discussion on Friday morning to understand the issues faced by the farmers in the Valava zone. The Agriculture Secretary and Deputy Director General of the Mahavali Authority, Engineer Nilanta Danapala, among others, were present at the meeting. Minister of Agriculture Mahinda Maravira expressed the following views in Gannuru yesterday. We have been informed of several potential investments in the egg and poultry industry. We are currently analyzing these proposals. If they are successful, we will allow them to proceed. It is better to produce eggs and poultry items in the country itself rather than importing those. There is an expression of interest from India for the animal husbandry sector. Our aim is to ensure that the egg, poultry and milk requirement in our country is fulfilled through local production and also to export excess amounts. While a group of people are demanding water, another group had to take to the streets today for the safety of their lives. 
Locals protested at the 15th mile post along the Buttala Kathargama main road demanding a solution to the human elephant conflict. The group protested by obstructing the road. Recently, a woman lost her life after being attacked by a wild elephant in Gonagangara, Buttala. Many rural Sri Lankans have been compelled to wait in line due to the Asphasma Welfare Benefit Program. The Department of Samudra Development said three 396,094 Samudri beneficiaries will be given the Samudri benefits from August once again. Recently, the Sri Lankan government decided to award Samudri benefits to the Samudri beneficiaries who were not included in the Asphasma Welfare Benefits Program. Director General of Samudri, Bandula Tilakasuri, told News First that the payments will be made by the Samudri banks. Accordingly, 1.28 million people who applied for the Asphasma Welfare Benefits Program will receive payments from either the Samudri Program or the Asphasma Program. The Samudri Development Officers Association stressed the Samudri beneficiaries should be given the Asphasma benefits as well. Government hospitals are facing a shortage of insulin, a vital medical drug for many patients. Additional Health Secretary Dr. Saman Ratnayaka told News First that the supplier who was awarded the tender to supply insulin had failed to deliver sufficient stocks of the drug. Additional Health Secretary Dr. Saman Ratnayaka said that due to the insufficient stock, the Health Ministry is making attempts to purchase the insulin from two other suppliers. The additional Health Secretary told News First that 50,000 vials of insulin will be imported via the emergency purchase system in order to address the existing shortage. He said the insulin shipment will reach Sri Lanka by September 2023. The Medical Supplies Division has already run out of insulin and many diabetes patients depend on insulin provided by government hospitals and the shortage has crippled services at clinics as well. X-ray and CT scan activities at government hospitals are at risk due to the shortage of radiologists. The chairman of the Government Radiological Technologists Association, Chanaka Dharmavikrama, told News First that the country is in need of 400 radiologists. He noted that even if the X-ray and CT scan devices are repaired, there is no staff to operate those devices. Health Secretary Janaka Shri Chandrakupta told News First that a cabinet paper was produced seeking approval for the recruitment of radiologists. He said that once approval is given, the recruitment process will commence. Chairman of the Delimitation Committee, Mahinda Deshapriya, claims that it is illegal to sideline the report presented by the National Delimitation Committee. <laughs> The report compiled by the National Delimitation Committee, according to the regulations of the local authorities' election ordinance pertaining to delimitations, has been presented to the Prime Minister. What is left to do now is for him to hand it over to the President. The President can appoint a review committee to derive its shortcomings. If not, it can be redirected to either our committee or a new committee to review taking recent amendments into account. But paying no attention to a delimitation report is totally illegal. Mahinda Desha Priya expressed these views following a badge awarding ceremony for senior prefects held at the Gankanda Central College in Ratnapura. Former governor of the eastern province Anuradha Yahampath iterated the importance of maintaining international relations without compromising the country's sovereignty. The president does not have a mandate to introduce amendments to the constitution. The parliament does not have a mandate to enact it either. A two-thirds majority was given to introduce a new constitution, not to amend the current one. India stood in solidarity with us during our crisis. But we must further relations with all nations while protecting our sovereignty. The president had signed several agreements during his visit to India. These include agreements on trade, transport and also trincomalia. We view those are agreements that threaten our sovereignty, so we oppose them.
Now on to more local news, State Minister of Finance Ranjit Sembalapitya says plans are being made to lift import bans on, the, on further 300 types of goods. He made this revelation during an event held in Polpitya Yatiyanthota. Import bans on the items in question are to be lifted on the first week of September. Meanwhile, Chairman of Litro Gas Mudita Piri said that there will be no revision of Litro Gas prices. He made this announcement during a media briefing in Colombo today. We are holding this press conference at a time when the price of one metric ton of gas has increased by more than 85 US dollars in the global market. According to the price formula we have been provided, prices should have been hiked by around 470 rupees. But we would like to inform our consumers that although the price of gas has increased in the global market, Litro Gas will not hike the price of domestic gas cylinders. We made this decision by taking into account the burden on the people. The lowest gas prices this year were expected experienced last month. After predicting the timeline gas prices will be at their lowest, I ordered more than 8,000 tons of gas last month. As we predicted, the global prices of gas increased this month. But we ordered gas at last month's price. Therefore, as an institution, we are able to easily bear this burden and provide relief to the people. Today is day three of the 25th World Scout Jamboree in South Korea. News First's Yasrat Kamalsiri, a special delegate for the Scout Jamboree in South Korea, said that the Sri Lankan camp was visited by many other delegates. He went on to note that the area is experiencing high temperatures and scouts have been advised to always remain hydrated to avoid dehydration. He added that on Friday, scouts will be allowed to exchange badgers and mementos to develop international relations. Day 2 of the second leg of the LOLC Divi Sabio program got underway on Friday the 4th, centering the Kampaha district. The second leg of the LOLC Divi Sabio program targets Sri Lankan schools with less than 100 students. The objective of the program is to support the Sri Lankan student population to achieve their future goals. The LOLC Divisavia program will distribute school books and stationary items to school students for a period of one year. This worthy initiative is a collaboration between the LOLC group and the Ministry of Education. Students from the Baron Jayatilaka Primary School in Gampaha, Bandaranaika Primary School and Moragoda Vimaladharmasurya Primary School, among others, were gifted school books and stationary items. And that's a wrap of your lunchtime news. For the News First team, I've been Rochelle Tumodra. For more of these stories and for more of the very latest, log on to www.newsfirst.lk. Thank you and have a nice day. Be the first to know about the biggest stories as they break. Subscribe to News First English News Alerts. News First, your trusted English news channel.